going to show you two simple methods for p-value correction. One is going to be the Bonferroni method, and the other is going to be the Benjamini Hochberg. I'm going to do this in Python, but these methods will easily transfer to R if you know how to use basic R data frame functions. But first, when do you actually use a p-value correction? You use it whenever you are testing multiple hypotheses against the same data. So for example, if you were to test thousands of hypotheses against even random data, there is a high probability that at least one of the hypotheses will be considered significant, even though it's just random data. So a great example of this is differential expression analysis, where you test the differential expression significance of somewhere around 20,000 separate genes. And so for the example I'll be doing today, I'll actually be using output from dseq2 differential expression. But you can do the same sort of corrections on anything as long as you have multiple p-values. First, we'll just import pandas. And then I'm just going to use pandas to read the data frame, which is saved as a CSV. So here we see we tested 15,000 different genes. And the default dseq output actually does a p-value adjustment. So this will be nice to compare against after we do it. But anyway, let me show you how to do the Bonferroni method. So we'll just make a new column in the pandas data frame. And we'll just call it bond for Bonferroni. And this is super simple. We're just going to set it equal to the data frame P value column. So we're going to take the column values here. And then we're going to multiply it by the number of tests we did. So in this instance, it's going to be 15,326, which is also just the length of the data frame. So now if we look at the data frame, we have a new value of adjusted p values with the Bonferroni method. But you see how simple the Bonferroni method actually is. It's just the p-value times how many hypotheses you tested. And after I do the BH correction, we'll do a quick comparison and I'll go over the pros and the cons of doing one over the other. The benjamini hochberg method is very simple as well. We're going to do a slight variation on it, which doesn't require you to input a false discovery rate. And this is the way that dseq2 does it by default, for example. So we have our data frame. And the first thing we need to do is to sort by the p-value. So we're just going to do df.sortValues. And we're going to sort by p-value, which is the column name. And you see that automatically it goes from lowest to highest. And let's just resave data frame as this. And then the next thing we want to do, because the BH method requires the rank number for each hypothesis, so we just need to re-index this data frame so that it goes from 1 to 15,300. So we'll just do another df, df equals df dot reset index. And then we're going to pass drop equal to true, just so that it doesn't make a new column. All right, so now we have the p-values in the correct order, and we have this index that goes from 0 to 15,000. So let's just make a new column, and we'll call it bh for benjamini Hochberg, and we'll set that equal to the p-value, so df.p-value, again, which is just all the values from this column. And then kind of like the Bonferroni, we're going to multiply it by the length of the data frame, or the number of tests we performed. But then we're going to divide this by the rank. So df.index, which is just this column here, the index column. If you had the rank in a different column, you would just call the name of the column instead of index. And then importantly, since the index starts at zero, we have to add one and then put this in parentheses. And then now if we look at the data frame, you see we have our bh column now which is actually identical to the adjustment that dseq2 does. All right, let's just do a really quick comparison between the output from the Bonferroni method and the bh method. So if we look at all the values in the data frame where the Bonferroni column is less than 0 0.05, we see that there are only 213 genes. 
that were considered significant after Bronferoni correction. If we do the same thing for the BH method, we see that you have 1300. So right here, this pretty much highlights the difference between Bonferroni and BH. Bonferroni is gonna be more conservative and you're gonna have more false negatives. BH is gonna be less conservative, but you have a higher chance for false positives. So there's really no best answer for which one to use when. Typically for differential expression analysis like this, people use the BH method, but if you were really worried about false positives, then maybe the Bonferroni method would be better. But as you see, they're both very simple to calculate.